Alrighty, as promised in this last video, we're going to be talking about changes of state. Um, again, a physical change because we're not changing the substance itself, um, but we are changing the state of matter it's in, whether it's a liquid, a solid, or whether it's a gas. Now, I have the beginnings of a diagram up here on the board behind me. And so what we're going to be talking about is the different types of changes, solid to liquid, liquid to gas, or back down the other way. Any time that you go from a solid to a liquid or from a liquid to a gas, um, your particles are going to be gaining energy. And if you think about the original diagrams that I had up several videos ago where your um, solid uh, particles were all packed very tightly together and were just vibrating back and forth, and then your liquids, those particles were just kind of sliding past each other. And then your gas particles were there zooming around at a high rate of speed. Okay. Uh, you can easily see that um, kinetic energy is going to increase um, between a solid and a liquid and again between a liquid and a gas. So anytime that I'm going to go up on my diagram, I'm going to be gaining energy and I've um, explained that or delineated that, indicated that by a red arrow showing that I'm going to gain energy. Anytime I go from a gas to a liquid or from a liquid to a solid, I'm going to be taking energy away. The particles are not going to be moving as quickly once they make that phase change. And so those are all going to be um, indicated by a blue arrow where I'm going to be losing energy. Okay, so um, there are, it's a, this is basically a big vocabulary day because there's a lot of different vocabulary words for these different um, changes in state. So if I start um, probably with, with what's maybe the most easily recognizable, if I go from a solid to a liquid, so if you take an ice cube and you set it on the table, what does it do? Yup, it melts. And so going from a solid to a liquid is melting. Okay? And then if I take my liquid and I stick it back in the freezer, and I turn it back into a solid ice cube again, what's that called? Yeah, that's called freezing. So here's an interesting point for you, and that is this. The melting point and the freezing point are exactly the same temperature. So if you think about an ice cube, you um, recognize that once um, the temperature hits zero degrees Celsius, that ice cube is going to start to melt. Similarly, if you have liquid water, as soon as the temperature hits zero degrees, that liquid water is going to start to freeze. And so the, the melting point and the freezing point, um, the melting point of ice, the freezing point of water are exactly the same temperature. They're both zero degrees. And that's going to be the same for anything that melts or freezes. Now, obviously, um, they're not going to have the same melting and freezing point as water does. I mean, um, liquid uh, metal obviously is going to be much hotter than liquid water because you don't want to touch it. You're going to burn yourself. Um, but the, the melting point and the freezing point of that metal, the melting point and freezing point of any two things are, or of anything is going to be the exact same point. So what if I want to go from a liquid to a gas. Well, from a liquid to a gas is called vaporizing. And there are actually two different ways that something can vaporize. One involves um, uh, the, the temperature, and so that is going to be done with boiling it. So you can see that happen whenever you put water on the stove, turn it up high enough, and then as, as it starts to boil, starts to bubble, and then those, gap, those liquid particles start to escape from the liquid and enter the gas phase, okay? So that's boiling. However, it's also possible that if you have an, um, like a puddle outside on a sunny day, and eventually that puddle just disappears. Well, it doesn't disappear because it boils. It's not, it's not that hot outside, even if it's a hot day. It doesn't get hot enough for water to boil on the sidewalk. So um, you can also vaporize a liquid um, just by evaporation. So two different 
two different ways that you can that you can vaporize something one is by raising the temperature enough to get it to boiling but you can also um, have those liquid particles escape into the gas form by evaporating as well okay then if i'm going to take that gas and i'm going to turn it back into a liquid that is called condensation um, you can often see condensation um, happening when you have a cold glass of something outside on a hot day and the water molecules in the air will hit that cold glass and then they will condense into the liquid form then that's how your glass gets all wet it's not like your glass is leaking it's just it's the water molecules in the air that condense on the side of the glass because it's cold okay so um, melting and vaporizing both are gains in energy because we're going to a a state of matter where the particles are moving more quickly condensation and freezing are both um, changes of state where we are losing energy because in both cases from a gas to a liquid from a liquid to a solid the particles are slowing down now believe it or not it is possible to go directly from the gas state to the solid state or from the solid state to the gas state and kind of bypassing the liquid state in between um, and you actually have seen both of these although you may not recognize that you've done it that you have seen them um, to go from the gas state um, to the solid state uh, that is called deposition now you may have heard this um, deposition in terms of uh, if you've taken an earth science class already you may have heard of this in terms of how a stream is carrying its uh, a load of sediment and it deposits it that's not what this is okay this is actually a change of state and you can see it happen on um, a really cold morning because if you get up in the morning and you see that there's frost outside uh, covering your car windows maybe or covering the grass there's frost on the grass that's happened because there was um, gaseous water molecules in the air and then it got cold enough the surfaces got cold enough and they actually deposited as a solid form as frost on the grass or on the car it's not like it turned into a liquid first now you would you would have it condense if the temperature was um, warm enough where you would just have dew in the morning but if the temperature is cold enough where it's below freezing then that those gaseous water molecules are actually going to deposit as in the solid form as frost um, you can also turn a solid directly into a gas and that process is called sublimation and you probably have seen not yet that you've seen it happen but you probably have, have recognized this happening too although you may not have known why have you ever had an ice cube that kind of falls way to the back of the freezer and then you find it later on and it's a whole lot smaller than all of your other ice cubes are well that's because sublimation has taken place that solid ice cube has actually decreased in size because some of the particles have turned into the gaseous state in the freezer and so it decreases the size of a solid so it goes directly from a solid to a gas so again i want you to be familiar um, with which of these particles or which of these processes are losing energy and which ones are gaining energy and you'll need to make sure that you know all of these different terms for these phases uh, phase changes as well